Welcome to a tasting of this week's new coffee release, which is Suke Shikiso, a natural processed coffee from Ethiopia. It's mixed cultivar, grown at between 1900 and 2100 meters above sea level. Now, I don't often buy natural processed coffees from this origin. One, they can be a little tough to roast, and two, I had got a little bit tired of the very fruit forward, funky characteristics of natural processed coffees. Roll back 15 years when I got into roasting coffee, naturals were the type of things that I would yearn for because they were so wacky, so fruit forward, so divisive, and so obviously not normal coffee. However, I have drunk so many of them in my time that not that I get bored of them, but maybe I got a little bit weary of the powerful fruit, the punchy fruit. It became a little too intense and something that maybe I'd shy away for, from because I started to understand the benefit of well-processed, delicious, washed coffees, coffees that are clean and crisp, and, and everything that I yearn for, and coffees that will form part of my portfolio going forward. So 86, 87 points and above. However, every now and then, I like to purchase a natural processed coffee from this origin. Why? Because it's a really great way to encourage my customers to understand that coffee doesn't have to be dark and bitter. It is still such a common, uh, occurrence within the UK coffee scene where you would go to a another cafe and find that their espresso or filter brews are rich, texture forward, but bitter and dark and horrible. Anyway, so I've bought this based on that notion to have something that's light and fruity uh, to use as a medium in which to discuss why and how coffee can be so delicious. And also, I sort of bought this because it harks back to an experience that I had in 2010 in central London. My partner Katie was working for House of Fraser at that point in time and she worked on Boxing Day. Horrible thing, but anyway, she worked on Boxing Day and I had a bunch of time to kill. So I was wandering around central London trying to find a cafe that was open that wasn't one of the uh, massive chain stores. And I found a company called Notes on Trafalgar Square. And in there, I sat probably as one of the very few customers feeling guilty that I was in there on Boxing Day. However, they were open and I was there having a brew. And I drank the most amazing experienced coffee that I've ever had in, in my life. It was roasted by Has Been back when Steve Layton ran that show. Uh, so roasted by Has Been, natural processed, shikiso, uh, and in the cup, uh, this split shot cup that I had, espresso, it was like blueberries, and with milk, it was like strawberries and cream. And it was that very moment on Boxing Day 2010 that I decided to never roast commercial grade coffee ever again, and instead pursue what I was beginning to know was the specialty coffee scene. So this coffee, this region, this, this processing uh, station, is the reason why I now roast specialty grade, so 83 points and above coffee today. Uh, hence, when I saw it on an offers list from Falcon Specialty, I had to buy a bag because of that reason, notwithstanding the fact that I wanted a fruit forward coffee for my customers. So, let me now have a quick taste. Mm. Right, as expected, very fruit forward. There's a touch of orange, um, this has got a huge amount of texture, and I, and I specifically was trying to roast this coffee for texture on the Loring. This is a Loring roast, by the way, so if you fancy purchasing this coffee, it is the first ever natural that I've roasted on that shiny silver machine over there. I think I've done a great job. There's lots to learn, and I'll discuss this shortly, uh, but it is a Loring coffee, should that be up your street for a test. Uh, anyway, back to tasting. Citrus at orange, this stone fruit, I've got a bit of cherry, some ripe Victoria plum, there's fig, um, so that sweet sticky texture, and then there's a wonderfully creamy 
uh, finish. And we've said sort of vanilla custard. Um, it's definitely creamy and it does have that custard-like quality. It's silky smooth. Um, this is a filter brew, wonderful, wonderful filter brew. It's, it would make a great cafetiere. I'll probably have this on my Sunday morning coffee at home with my, with my daughter as a cafetiere. It would also make great espresso. If you like fruit forward espresso, this would be right up your street. Uh, there's a tickle of acidity, but the texture and that sweetness and, and the fruit would make a fantastic espresso. Anyway, so to the roasting on the Loring, uh, high altitude coffee, I wanted the drop temperature to be relatively low for where I've been exp experimenting with. So uh, the return air was 225 degrees Celsius as my drop. 75% um, gas uh, up to 160 degrees where I marked the yellowing stage and onset of Maillard. Um, that was about five minutes. I wanted the coffee to, to spend some time releasing the water uh, getting ready for those Maillard reactions. The 160 to first crack was four-ish minutes. Um, I wanted to try and have an extended period there to really try to accentuate the texture in the mouth. And then going into first crack then, um, I found so far in the transition phase between Probat and Loring that the development time for me needs to be about minute 55 to two minutes and five seconds. Why? Because I just, this, this produces a lot of acidity, that less so. Uh, and, I, and I'm trying to work out exactly what I want from the new machine without being too divisive and too different. Um, as I develop my skill set, as I cut through more and more roasts, I'll understand how to increase solubility to allow me to rose to a lighter color and allow me to therefore be a bit more expressive in the shortened development time. Um, I won't talk about percentages uh, because I prefer time than percentages. So minute 55 to, to, to two minutes to 205. Um, the total roast time for this was 10 minutes 50. Uh, again, I wanted to be plenty of time in the roasting environment to make sure that we have developed all the lovely chemicals um, and flavor compounds um, rather than a quick, fast type of roast. Anyway, so to recap, uh, first coffee on the Loring, first natural on the Loring. This has got lots of history as far as a region for me personally. In the cup, sweet, fruit forward, but not funky, figs, orange, stone fruits, creamy custard-like finish, really versatile brew suitable for every method of brewing. Go and have a try. Thanks.